Welcome, everybody, to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. I'm Pete Wright. That there is Nikki Kinzer. Nikki. Hello, Pete Wright. How are you, Nikki? I'm good. Are you feeling good? Feeling strong? Is your kung fu strong? Kung fu? Yeah. <laughs> is your chi? Yes. How's your chi? Good. <laughs> Although I had to say my phone was just distracting me, so I had to like turn it upside down so I didn't see the text messages coming through. That's really important. Yeah. That's really, I actually had to do the same thing. My wife was my wife was texting me to see if I would move money in our bank account. I can't think about this right now. Well, I got a text from a, a client and I thought it said, Hey baby. <laughs> thinking well that's that's a little weird you run a very strange <laughs> service <laughs> i know i'm gonna i can't stop laughing it's a whole but different actually, kind of adhd coaching niche i think actually what it said is not badly i was just asking how her day was going and she said not badly and i thought it said hey baby hey, baby it's all right <laughs> There you go. My tea is good. Awesome. You know, I'm really <laughs> glad you started that way because <laughs> we're talking more about work. Yes, and we are. Uh, what a valuable experience to segue right into organizing your workplace uh, if you're struggling with uh, ADHD. Yeah. First, first, uh, take note of making sure that you uh, reread your text messages before you respond. Yes. Make sure you you actually are seeing <laughs> what they wrote, not what you think they wrote. This was yeah. uh, this episode follows up on our. Uh, you know, we we started by talking about uh, you know back to work, uh, picking the right job, uh, picking the right career. How do you gauge uh, the right uh, work for you if you're struggling with ADHD? Something that really capitalizes on your uh, your experience experiences and your strengths. And then and we talk. I have to tell you, Pee I'm sorry. I'm no, going to completely ahead. interrupt you. Do it. But this is a hot topic right now. I don't know if you've, if you noticed, but like, um, I'm getting all, all kinds of the things from different organizations um, from that, you know, talk about ADHD about the workplace. So this is kind of a hot, hot thing right now. So you know, I, I think it is. I think it is. And I think the timing, the season is right. You know, I made a joke about back to school is back to work, but this is, this is a time of great transition, you know, this sort of August, September time frame, And uh, I think we're all thinking about it. I know I am. And, and that's why I'm excited to talk about this topic, organizing your workspace. So let's assume mm-hmm. you've picked the right career and you, you've nailed your interview, which we talked about last week. Now you're setting up your desk. How do you do it and set yourself up for success uh, in a way that, again, leverages your strengths? That's right. That's right. Well, and I think it's it's important that we highlight, you know, what organization can do for you, especially if you're starting a job and you want to make a good impression. Um, it can definitely, you know, help increase that productivity that you're looking for, can save you time, saves embarrassment, right? If somebody um, is asking you for something, you'll know where to find it. Um, and you're going to feel more confident about your job and more in control of your workday, which are all wonderful things. And so there's lots of benefits to, to consider when um, you're organizing your your workspace and and why to take the time to do it you know why it's important so i have to put that in there that yeah. motivation is important uh, i think it's hugely important where where do you start i mean you know well, I, I bring up this up because you know we have we talked sufficiently about some of the challenges that that face you if you're struggling with adhd at work what, what do you mean exactly? Well, you know, I mean, I know we've talked about it in the in like in the past that yeah. that the the things you struggle with at work are similar to the things you struggle with at home, right? Yeah, time management, organization, uh, but but it becomes. I, I think uh, these challenges are exacerbated by the fact that you're working typically with other people and in teams and the frustration that can come uh, from not feeling like you are totally in control when, when it comes to listening or, or taking turns or following directions or dealing with details or, or even sitting still and managing your emotions when you find you are stressed and under a, a, a dealing with anxiety. Um, you know, when I think about uh, organizing uh, at work, it, it's all about putting systems in place that uh, mitigate the natural stresses of ADHD. Would that be mm-hmm. a fair way to put it? 
Oh, absolutely. And I think that there is that, what you were kind of talking about too, is that added pressure that you're working with other people. So, you know, if you're organizing your home, it, you know, yes, it affects the people that you live with, but you can also get away with more probably by leaving the clutter around and maybe not having the systems in place, but at work, you really can't. It, it, Cause exactly. that then, yeah, then your job can be in, in huge jeopardy, especially if you're just starting out because yeah. most companies have kind of that 90 day trial period. So you want that kind of good first impression and, and well, such. when you're yeah. under a microscope, right? Right. And, and, you know, there's a lot we could talk about when we talk about systems and, and workflow and things like that. But I, what I really want to focus on today is just really the, 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 the actual organization of the work spot or workspace, um, and keep it at that level. Because yeah. I think if we go into too many systems and, and how we do this and when we do that, it's going to get kind of confusing. Well, and I've got things to talk about systems coming up in a couple of weeks. So yes. stand by. Yes, absolutely. Um, so my, where to start? That was a question that you initially asked. And I think that, you know, in all of the organizing podcasts that we've done, and if you read my book and you, you know, have ever listened to me speak or done a workshop of mine, you'll know um, that that sorting and that purging is, is really important. And so that's really where you start. Now, if you are brand new to the job, there's not going to be a whole lot you have to purge, right? I mean, because you just, this is a new desk for you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've been there for a while and you realize I'm accumulating too many pens and pencils and, um, you know, I, I don't need all of this extra stuff. That's what you kind of want to look at is, you know, the less you have around you, the easier it's going to be for you to, to find what you need. So kind of figure out, you know, how many pens and pencils do you really have to have instead of having a big, huge bucket, you know, in front of you that has a hundred pens. That's not necessary at this point. You know, I think pens are a leading indicator for disorganization. Because you can't find one, so you always have one well, kind of I, available. Yeah, you know, it's kind of the other side of that, too. It's like there's always a pen, and what do you do when you see a pen? You put it in a drawer. And eventually you have a drawer that is full of old pens, and that is a trigger for, like, that becomes the drawer to stash stuff. And then it's right. not, and then you have old pieces of bacon, and, like, it just ends up being a mess. <laughs> That's right. And then the mice come. Because then you the have mice, bacon but you don't house. care because you have all these pens. That's right. You have a pen. <laughs> well, and, and especially if you're going into um, somebody else's desk, right? Because a lot of times you'll you'll take somebody's desk that you're replacing and they may have left stuff in the desk that you don't need or want or care for. Don't feel like you have to keep it, you know? Um, so I would do a little bit of purging first. This isn't going to, you know, this isn't going to be too time consuming only because, again, it's probably a, a, what we're talking about is somebody that's coming into a, a new position. Um um, but if you've been in your position for a while and you would like to do some organization of your workspace, then that's definitely where I would start first is that, that purging and get rid of what you don't need. Um, the, the second piece of, uh, or second tip that I have for people is to recognize what your top 10 items are. And what I mean by that are what are the items that you use on a daily basis? And so for most people, you're going to think of your phone, your computer, uh, maybe a notepad, if you like to, to use, um, notepads for notes, maybe there's certain files that you go to every single day. Maybe you have like an inbox on your desk, whatever those things are, but identify kind of around 10 items that are most important to you. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you assign homes to those items first in your work, work spot. And the reason for that is those are the things that you get to on a regular basis. So it's important that you know exactly where they are and it's important that they're very easy to get to. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, you know, you want to make sure that, 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 you, your your computer is where you need it to be. You've got your trash can next to it. You've got your phone, you know, everything just to make the workspace easy for you to work in. Um, so just identifying those top 10 items can be really important. Uh, if you're a fidgeter, you know, then I would definitely say don't forget to, to include that into your top 10. If you need to have something in your hand when you're on the phone, make sure that's available to you. Make sure that you know where it goes when you're done with it, that kind of thing. So that's a very much an ADHD um, friendly tip. Oh, yes. I strongly recommend the rejuvenation hand invigoration putty. Yes. It's, the I level is firm and it is a fantastic ADHD brain tool. And I have... 
uh, a little heart crystal that I put in my hand when I coach. Mm. Yeah, that's another smooth, any smooth stones mm-hmm. are really yep. very, very nice. Very nice. And I have a little purple bag for it. So when it has like its little home and it goes yeah. in its little sort purple bag. Sort of a bag. satchel, a little yeah. sachet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So that is very important to include that into your top 10. Um, okay. So everything else that you have outside of that top 10 obviously also needs to have a home. And so we want to look at that. Um you know, we want to be thoughtful and how we're putting things uh, away and where we're putting things. And so remembering that core piece that organizing is about finding what you need when you need it. So you want to just make sure you're setting up your space really easy for you. That is, um, that is still a mantra around our house. And I think we, uh, the, as, in terms of a, a catchphrase, you know, for everything, there is a place and for every place there is a purpose. Like yes. that, that is such an important concept. It's straight out of obviously your book, but, uh, but it, it, it's such an important concept, I think, it, when you are either setting up or or taking over your workspace is to remember that that even at work, even this place that you you feel like you is sort of transient, uh, you uh, you you owe it to yourself to determine the spaces and the purposes for each space in your in your office. And you do that by assigning homes. That's right. exactly right. And so, um, and, and, and that includes every single pin, every single, t- you know, tape dispenser, um, stapler, whatever you want to make sure you know where those things are, assign that home, put them in the right drawer, you know, so that when you take them out, you can put them back in. I mean, all of that same thing with files, uh, you know, your, your most recent current files should be right near you, but those things that aren't used, you know, rarely or ever can be put away or at most of those are in those areas that are inconvenient. Um, that's the way to think is, you know, what's, what's important, start that, start there first. And then everything else still needs to have a home, but you can kind of go outside of that triangle of, of those 10 items that are important. If it's kind of a visual for you. Um, so definitely. And then the, the last, or actually, I guess it's the last tip. And then I want you to talk about something that I think is important. Um, but in step four of my book and taking control of your space, we talk about routines and daily habits. And I think this is really important. Um, this particular step when you're talking about organizing your workspace and, and really the reason it's so important is it goes back to that, um, conversation we had at the beginning where we are working with other people. And so that perception is real and you want to make sure, um, that you, you do some of these habits on a daily basis to keep the, the workspace organized. And, and that really comes down to having that daily cleanup, um, at the end of your day, you know, take a few minutes and put your stuff away, file the papers that need to be filed, um, have a spot for your current projects so that you can put those away in a nice tidy way. Uh, piles are not bad. Piles are great. They just need to be, you know, probably neater piles than just random piles all around a desk. But if you can kind of put them in order, maybe put a sticky note on top of the first pile. So you remember what it is, you know, those are those little reminders so that when you come back the next day, you know what that pile is without having to go through it. Um, just little tips and, and habits like that can make a big difference. Um, so I, I definitely think that daily cleanup is really important. If we start falling behind, then that's when the, the desks tend to get really cluttered. We, we still do that. I know we've talked about this in the past. We still do at the end of the day at home the daily cleanup song. You know, mm-hmm. we have, we put on sort of the latest kind of pop song and we know we do a cleanup and however long the song is, that's however long we clean up. And uh, at the end of the song, it's over. You know, that's right. Like we're, we're finished. <laughs> And, yeah. and if you're on top of it, if every day you kind of put a song in your head or turn on your, turn on a tune on your computer while you just sort of clean up, straighten up, move and, and move forward, you'll, you'll stay on top of things, I think, with greater efficiency. Absolutely. And it won't take you long. I mean, it literally will only take about five or 10 minutes. I was talking to a client the other day. Um, we were talking about her dorm room because she, she lives in her dorm with two other students and they all have desks. And she was talking about her desk and how does she keep it organized and clean. And, and, um, that was one of the things I, I said is it's, it's not going to take you very long every five minutes or every, every night for five minutes. Um, not every five minutes. Can you imagine? Every five yeah, minutes, right. clean up. Uh, <laughs> but at the end of the evening, every five, you know, for, God, I keep saying every five, <laughs> uh, four or five minutes, um, do that cleanup and just get those papers in the binder, put them in the file, you know, put the pencils in the drawer or in the cup, whatever. And it just makes an amazing um, difference on, on 
how you feel and, and the perception that you're giving out to you, either your roommates or to your coworkers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last thing that I want to point out is, is that routine. Cause that is also a big part of the last part of the book of taking control of your space is just getting into a routine. And we will talk next week more about how to get the most out of your day. Um, but I think it really does start with doing kind of a daily check of your calendar the night before. Um, so as you're cleaning up, you know, look for, look at your calendar and look at what's up for, for tomorrow, what's next. And so if there's anything that you can kind of prepare or plan prior to the next day, that's really going to set you off on the right, right track when you come into your office the next day and you already know what's first. Like you already have that pile organized and in front of you or in front of the, the computer. I mean, it just really sets the tone and, um, we will talk more about this next week, but I, I wanted to kind of throw that out there that I think getting into that routine of looking at the next day, um, can really make a big difference. Absolutely. Totally agree. Okay. So my last thing is I want Pete to talk about because he, has personal experience with this. Um, and this is very ADHD related in the sense that if somebody is very fidgety and they don't like sitting down or they need to kind of get up and move, um, an alternative way to work is having a stand up desk, right? Yes. Yes. So tell I, us, you've had this for several years. In many, I've, I, I, not yet in many years, but definitely several years. I think going on three years, I've been working mm-hmm. exclusively at a stand up desk. And, and, uh, I, I made the transition, um, you know, I, I, I'm at my desk a lot. And in my old desk, I was sitting a lot and I started having some significant lower back pain and hip pain. And, uh, I was not, you know, feeling like I was uh, like my joints, I was feeling trouble in my joints. They weren't being worked enough, my knees. Uh, and, and so I decided, you know, there was a craze three years ago. Everybody was so excited. You know, the Twitter thing was trending. Like everybody's excited about the stand up desk. So, uh, who am I not to jump on a meme. Uh, <laughs> right. so, uh, so I built these, uh, little like sleeves, these shelves to kind of fit my desk and lift it up. I, I kind of measured it appropriately. So ergonomically my elbows are bent appropriately. And, and I lifted my entire giant L shaped desk up to standing desk height. So I got rid of my chair. It was, uh, it, it was extremely challenging initially. I'd say the first week was, was really tough. Uh, and I, I made the transition fairly slowly. You know, I would start at, you know, a half hour a day and the next day, 45 minutes trying to get up to an hour and a half. And then, uh, eventually, you know, it, I, I didn't notice that I was standing anymore. And I think that was the big transition for me when I stopped thinking about it as a stand up desk, it just became my desk. Uh, and, uh, never really wanted to go back. Uh, so I think the big question is like, how, how does the desk really affect me in my ADHD? And I think you, you said it, it, it is extremely uh, positive impact for me on the, on the uh, ability to focus because, uh, I now have another channel for my, uh, it, when I get fidgety. Mm-hmm. Right. When I'm, mm-hmm. when I'm finding it difficult to focus and my body starts moving, I can actually now, instead of just moving my hands or swiveling or, or finding like that, I, I can now move my feet and my feet are out of my way. Like they're, they're yeah, beyond right. me. I can start swaying back and forth. I can, you know, start kind of walking in place. I can, I can move from foot to foot. Like it, it ends up looking like I'm distracted, but instead I'm just sort of channeling any of the fidgeting energy lower, leaving my hands and brain free to work on whatever's in front of me. And that's, mm-hmm. that's that's been very positive. Um, I, I tend to keep my desk cleaner uh, mm-hmm. uh, with the standing desk. I don't actually know why. I, I can't. Hmm, that's, I, interesting. I, that's like a, tr- a change that happened, and I can't. I, I don't know why the stand up desk has has done that. Maybe it's because it's closer to my window, and when I walk by my front door, I can see into my desk. When it's a mess, it kind of pains me. Uh, but but naturally, I keep my desk cleaner. I keep my my projects more sort of isolated. My stacks are isolated. Or, or at least discrete stacks on projects. And so it generally, I feel like I can relate to my desk better. Um, yeah. I do, um, you know, I, I do find, uh, when I, you know, if I strain my ankle or, uh, you know, if I, if I have any other, like sustain any other, even minor injury, uh, on my knees or, or legs, and this has happened a couple of times, you know, you take a bad step and you kind of hurt your ankle, then the stand up desk becomes a, a difficult thing to do. So luckily, you know, my, 
I have a laptop. I go out and sit at the kitchen table for a couple of days and, mm-hmm. and recover. And, and uh, then I'm back. Could you at get it. like a stool? Like, could you, I mean, you could uh, probably get a stool easily. You totally right? can. Yeah. And I don't. And that is, I'm constantly complaining about that. And this is one of those complaints that, you know, doc, I hate it when I go up like, when I lift my arm like this, well, don't lift your arm like that. You know, right. I hate <laughs> it that I don't have a stool. Well, Pete, go get a stool. Go get a stool. <laughs> that's <laughs> so right. That's definitely on my mind. You know, I haven't made the move to the treadmill desk. And that's one that is yes. the. You know, this is a pretty controversial thing, first of all, because if you get one uh, kind of right, I mean, the whole concept is you have a treadmill and an adjustable height desk that you, so you're actually walking, walking while you work. And most of these treadmills, you know, they go up to, to about four miles an hour. So it's generally a slow walk, but it keeps you really moving, yeah, um, right. you know, in a, in a sort of direction. Um, I have, I have heard some real, uh, you know, mixed reviews of these treadmill desks. First of all, they're very expensive. I mean, they start, if you get one of the package deals, they start at like $2,000, wow. uh, you know, from a company like tread desk or Trek desk and, And so that ends up being, you know, the first obstacle. Um, The second is how, you know, you have to be pretty coordinated uh, to be able to type while you're walking or write while you're walking or talk on the phone while you're walking. I could not, uh, I I think I can reliably say that I could not podcast while I'm walking. No. Uh, I I think (laughs) I I want to just... You know, so yeah. the flip side of that is we know we need to walk 10,000 steps a day. I mean, this is a, this is a best practice for heart health. And, and so if you if you find that just standing up is a step in the right direction, this, this may be, um, you know, a, another opportunity for you to really, um, uh, take that, uh, 10,000 step challenge while you're working. So, that's well, it. and I just want to add, I have two different clients who, um, are are kind of doing a combination of, of what you just talked about. So I have one client who has a stand up desk where her computer is. Um, but then she has a sitting desk where she actually does more of like the paperwork and where she meets with clients, but then she'll get up and stand up to go to her computer. Um, and she may have a laptop. I'm not sure that it sits on the, the, the other desk, but she's kind of has both, right? Mm-hmm. So she can kind of go back and forth. So that's one way to do it. Um, if you wa- didn't want to just go straight to just only having the, the standing desk or at least get the stool, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I misspoke like the, the tread desk, uh, is, is $2,000 to start, but you cannot get into a Trek desk, which isn't, uh, it, it doesn't quite, it's not as uh, like machine adjustable, you know, you have to unscrew yeah. stuff to adjust it, but you could, that starts at about 500 bucks on Amazon. So, yeah. so that's another opportunity. And it's this big sort of kidney bean shaped desk that, uh, that gives you all the, all the treadmill controls and, and some space to work. So, so there are, there are cheaper options to do it. And of course I've, I, I've run into a number of people who do it, um, you know, who keep their feet moving by just building their own. You know, if you have a treadmill, well, you can put a desk on it. That's exactly it. And that, that was the other, the client that I'm thinking of, that's exactly what she did is she kind of made it work for herself where I don't know exactly how she did it, but the, the computer can fit onto the treadmill and she can do it. Um, but she doesn't use that as her everyday desk. Yeah. That is more of if she's in a conference call and she's not really speaking, she can listen to the conference call and, and be on the treadmill or, um, you know, there, I think she's actually picked certain kinds of work that she would do on it. Uh, again, being able to go back to the sitting desk whenever she wants to and having the laptop in that. So it's sort of a combination of both worlds. I think it'd be hard to do the the treadmill desk completely, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, it would be a challenge for me. For if sure. anybody's doing that, let us know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, right. How's it working yeah. out for you? Yeah. Uh, so there you go. Yes. It is all uh that is some good stuff. So I really, I really like have you been thinking about doing a stand up desk yourself? No, not seriously. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. I'll just throw that out there. Yeah. I was thinking about doing some, and I'm going to screw up the pronunciation, but I was thinking about doing some feng shui. Feng shui. Feng shui. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm considering that. I'm so glad I brought up your chi. Yeah. You got to exactly. get your chi flowing. You're, yeah, I right. can tell you, your office is all messed up right now. You are absolutely anti-feng shui. You, know, you want to know why? 
because I'm facing the door. I mean, I'm You're facing back. away from Energy the Energy daggers. That's what those are in feng shui. You are being stabbed in the back right now, and you don't even know it. I know, right? I, oh. I, and I do know that because I, I did a little bit of research the other day, and uh, I, I saw that, and I'm like, whoops. So that's the only cons- real consideration is I'm trying to figure out maybe if I need to move my my desk around. But... You're a danger in your own skin right now. Your chi is just <gasps> screaming to get out. <laughs> I'm going to get a live plant. Maybe that will that kind of would balance help. it out a yes, little bit. Yes, that's what you need. And just put it in the doorway. There you go. A giant one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this has been awesome. Do we have any other uh, news or updates for the people? Nope, that's it. Excellent. Hey, everybody, thanks for uh, listening to our continuing uh, series on uh, ADHD in the workplace. Uh, next week, goodness, what are we talking about next week? We're. Uh, it, it is getting the most out of your day next week. Oh, that'll be good. Being more effective. That's what we're going to talk about yes. next week. We're very excited about that. And so uh, you should check out the uh, head out and, you know, go over to iTunes. That is where it is really helpful. And we have gotten some of the kindest comments from people recently. So sweet. We're just so sweet. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day uh, and uh, adding this to your task list, going over to iTunes and entering a kind review and a nice five-star review. That certainly helps the show uh, show up for other people who are searching for this kind of support. So if you think that uh, the show has made a connection somehow with you. Uh, you think it would be helpful to friends and family. We sure appreciate it that you uh, that you share the show. We, it's it's very kind of you to do that. We are honored to uh, be in your ears every week. So that's it, I think. Uh, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week on Taking a Troll, the ADHD podcast. Bye.